Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Season 4, Episode 3. Thoughts this episode is called Uprising. Another episode I love, like most MCU things. Spoilers for everything MCU leading up to it, including this episode, but no spoilers in this video for anything MCU that came out after this episode first premiered. Let's dive right in. So, let's see. Yeah, we open on this party and the electricity goes out. I love that it does start out looking like a blackout. Like at first, oh, you know, power went out to this building and a bunch of others. Sounds like a blackout. You know, maybe there's, you know, some kind of issue with a transformer somewhere. You know, let's be honest. They're, you know, blowing up cities all over the place. So, so yeah, the, the, you know, but then we see the helicopter crash and it's like, oh no, this is not just like the power grid. This is all electronic devices, you know, and, and I feel like helicopters, they're just, they are a dream scenario for screenwriters because it's just such a great way to show things are out of control to have a helicopter spiraling and crashing, you know. I, I feel bad for the, the people who invented them, because they meant well, I'm sure. But, yeah, helicopters, it doesn't take that much. Like, if you have the right equipment, it doesn't take a huge amount to, to take one out of, the, out of the sky. So, yeah, that's not an endorsement, just an observation. Obviously, it's wrong to attack helicopters. And, yeah, we, you know, we get a distorted voice and, and, you know, saying this is the inhuman resistance. And I appreciate that they don't pretend like the audience is going to buy that. Like, it's very clear the regular people are, you know, more likely to buy that. And that's what this is about. You know, it's not, oh, you know, maybe there's, you know, no, there's no way, like, like, Jai Ying and the rest of Afterlife were willing to do some pretty extreme things, but just, like, taking out power, you know, to one city every hour until our demands are met, you know. Like, even if you, like, hypothetically, maybe she would have been willing to, but it isn't very tactical, you know. This is, it's a false flag. This is the kind of thing that someone does to make it seem like someone else is responsible. And that is something, you know, like the watchdogs are domestic terrorists. And terrorists do very frequently to try to make it seem like others are doing something which would make them just, which would make the terrorists justified in the eyes of a lot of people. Not really. And yeah, we learn May has 20, less, yeah, 24 hours or less to live because Chen died and let's see I like Daisy's line about vetting Robbie and yeah this is very much one of those you know what else could go wrong Murphy's Law kind of scenarios you know throughout this episode a lot of different things go wrong all at once or in, you know, in, in sequence. And, let's see. Yeah, and now they talk about, you know, it's less than six hours before May cannot be saved. And, yeah, we have the, the senator going on TV, and, you know, yeah, as, as Colson points out, might as well be handing out torches and pitchforks. And then we get some, yeah, the show has POC rioting, which, yeah, I, uh, sadly, that is one of those things that not only conservatives mistakenly believe, you know, a number of leftists do sadly fall for that, you know, as well, when in reality it's, it's blown way out of proportion. Uh, there was a really excellent video. Let's see. Um, let's see if I can find it real quick. Yeah. Um, 
Anansi's library, Hurricane Katrina, and how the state will let you die, which explores this, you know, this image, this sadly, you know, popular with the media image that, you know, rioting is worse than the circumstances that lead to, to rioting, which, you know, I acknowledge that this show is also acknowledging... By, by the way, yeah, that video will be in the description box. But yeah, I acknowledge, obviously, the show is saying, you know, it's it's a bad circumstance as well, but it's using, it's playing on fears that are, yeah, based on, you know, Anansi explains it very well in the video. And then we have the... Yeah, uh, Reyes talks about, you know, settling scores, hoping that this will get rid of the, the Ghost Rider, which probably about 50% of the audience at least is like, please don't, he's awesome. Maybe he can, you know, take on a, a different host if, if that happens. And, yeah, very cool action scene when they're protecting Gabe you know, from the the rioters, and the, um, yeah, the thing of, you know, just the innuendo, you know, it's, it's too bad she's with someone who can't take care of her, you know, I, I don't think he's talking about the car, and then he says he'd like to look under the hood, if you know what I mean. Am I winking with the right eye? Yeah, he has his mind on some mechanic work. And then he's gonna try to sleep with Daisy, but yeah, um, and and Robbie like uses the the power to heat up the the hood of the car, burning the palms, and you know, yeah, the, they have the element of surprise. And let's see. Yeah, I like Max saying, oh, no, no, I'm not taking that bait. And, yeah, the, the you know, the watchdogs show up, and, you know, at the, at the party that Elena is at, and, yeah, it's, you know, this one guy is like, I, the magician might be inhuman, you know, he called it a gift, you know, and, and he even has the line, it's not, it's sleight of hand, it's not magic, you dunce, you know, and just, yeah. And, yeah, quite fun when Elena grabs the guns one by one as they're trying to, to shoot or threaten him. And I, yeah, I, I like the detail that, you know, Fitz points out all of this tech that they had is worthless now. Because it all runs on electricity. You know, it's very the day of the earth st still, like, showing how vulnerable we are because of how we've built our modern society. There's so much electronic everywhere. I'm not saying, oh, we should get rid of it, but it just, it makes you think. And, yeah, we get the, the yeah, the agents show up to, you know, join the party and the yeah we get several very cool it's not like one long take but there are several at least two long ish takes during that fight rather than cutting very frequently and yeah uh, I did not catch oh right Maria, I think, is is the character's name. You know, <clears throat> we we learned earlier that she and Elena have been friends for ten years, but now she's one of them. You know, we're not friends anymore. Is the you know, I don't think that's a direct quote, but that's you know what is conveyed. And, um, let's see, yeah, you know, this is sadly a very accurate portrayal of bigotry 
you know, people who have been friends for, for a very long time, you know, will suddenly not, you know, be friends with someone anymore over learning that there's something, you know, this is where it works quite well as a metaphor for something like LGBTQ plus identity, you know, there's sadly a lot of people who've lost close friends and family when they came out. And this does not mean that no one should ever come out, this means that we need to, you know, inform people so that they don't hate, you know, there, there used to be laws saying that if you were sufficiently unattractive, you were not allowed to go out in public, or at least you'd have to, like, cover yourself, you know. That's not the law anymore, so we can change. You know, people used to think that was completely okay. So, you know, sadly today there is a lot of transphobia, especially also homophobia, but we, you know, we just, we got to make sure that it keeps going in the right direction. You know, sadly, recently, there's been, yeah, there, there's a lot of fascists taking advantage of transphobia. And, <laughs> yeah, Colson shoots and turns out the guy had a vest. You know, a nice little dramatic moment. You know, you could have told Mac before firing the gun, but okay. And I, I love that Gabe says, I'm the one who takes care of Robbie, not the other way around. And yeah, you know, he is someone who keeps Robbie more, you know, yeah, keeps him from going completely off the deep end. Robbie says this himself. And... Yeah, Fitz makes several compasses. You know, am, am I the only one who went to Boy Scouts? You know, very, very clever. And I do believe that's accurate. The the thing about, you know, um, let's see. Yeah, um, so let's see. Yeah, someone put in the goof section, while Fitz's idea to triangulate the position of the EMP pulse is theoretically correct, but it's just that the readings are nonsense. But yeah, so, you know, yeah, hasn't hasn't been done in real life, but is theoretically possible. The the logic is sound. You know, it's not like back when, you know, there's there's some really old movies that like not very long after radar was was invented, people basically thought, "Oh, this is going to be able to do everything." You know, I, I forget what exactly was it like space travel. It was it was something completely ridiculous. You know, like radar is a fantastic tool, but it's, it's not gonna it's not gonna do that. I think it was one of the videos that were was on MST three K. Um, I think it might even be called something like radar something or something radar. And 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 like most episodes of MST3K, yeah, it's very watchable, very fun. And let's see. Yeah, and and I like, you know, Radcliffe says we're going to have to kill me. <laughs> and then it cuts and it's like what you know so and then you know the next time we see the scene he's like because then we can bring her back editor you you didn't have to cut me off right after i said the first part of the dramatic you know and it is like the thing is considering some of the stuff that radcliffe has said and done earlier in the show yeah honestly i wouldn't rule out that he would be willing to just kill may instead of trying to to save her so you know because like let's say that simmons has said i think we should kill may you know there's no one's like you know okay yeah whose whose dream sequence is this you know what is you know and yeah just as the you know so so yeah they do take her out and they're gonna use the the pads and then the power is out like oh my god just holy crap this was a very intense episode, and I'm here for it. And they do manage to to bring her back, and she does the you know however you know what is what is that thing you know 
how everyone wakes up in hospitals and movies thing, you know, that, that trope of, you know, tearing the stuff up, oh, get this crap off me, what's going on, you know, kind of thing. <clears throat> and I like, you know, so, sounds like you're back to your old self. I'm cranky. Exactly. And, yeah, very cool when the the agents attack the place where the the EMP is, you know, Elena distracts, and the, yeah, just really, really cool stuff. I, I like that, you know, Mac uses his, his size and physical strength and, and training to, to take some out. Fitz has, like, a, a fire extinguisher, which is much more effective here than it is in, in Deus Ex 1, so, yeah. Um, because, you know, he's not... As big, he's not. He doesn't have as much fighting training, you know. The watchdogs do. So, it's, yeah, very clever way to get around that. And and yeah, um, Coulson gets his hand back. And Daisy says to to Gabe, you know, I've never met an inhuman, but you know, she knows this is the safest play right now. I just know people hate them, you know, because they're different. And then Gabe says, I've, you know, I've experienced that too. And I guess, like, the fact that he doesn't specify, you know, because they, they could have had a line, you know, he could have said, you know, look at what I look like, or, you know, or people look at me and all they see is the wheelchair. So I think they're saying that both, have you know negatively uh, impacted him he's been faced with both racism and ableism and i do quite appreciate that because that is the kind of thing like there's a lot of racists who would not pick on someone who's in a wheelchair so you know trying to connect those two and say you know no they're they're like it's it's basically the same you you look at someone you see that they're different from you and you judge them for it you know and, and, yeah, sadly, there is a lot of ableism. There's even systemic ableism. So that's, again, something that we have to continue working to to address. And, yeah, you know, she, she says, oh, I've had a few names. And he says, is Quake one of them? <laughs> yeah, very nicely done. The and, and, yeah, it is very logical that he would put it together based on... Because apparently, you know, by this point in the show... Yeah, there have been, like, reports about Quake the Inhuman and, and her powers, and he did, you know, yeah, the the use of powers on, you know, to, to protect him, yeah. And, and he said, your secret's safe with me, provided you leave and never see my brother again. You know, and, yeah, really appreciate this thing of, you know, He's very protective of Robbie, and, you know, yeah, Robbie says earlier, Gabe doesn't know about Ghost Rider, and that's not going to change, you know, so, so yeah, Gabe is like, I mean, he goes, I don't know where he goes, but he's out all night, he comes back, he's like really messed up, you know, maybe it's drugs, I, I don't know exactly, and, and just, yeah, that really is the, the, yeah, and and yeah, he's he's protective of him. For a, for a while in Hollywood, if a character was physically disabled, that was basically it. They weren't allowed other character traits. They were maybe bitter because of their disability, but that was basically it. You know, I really appreciate we've gotten to a place where we can acknowledge no, they're they're human beings. You know, the fact that you know something. Is, is different about them doesn't mean that they're not still fundamentally human beings and yeah and and I believe you know since they're both Latino I believe that is a um, you know if you'll allow me to get slightly stereotypical that is something that is is true of a number of Latino individuals the the you know Latino community they try to look out for each other they try to look out for, for family members <clears throat> in part it comes with not having the kind of 
you know, the, the system is not necessarily going to be there for them the way it is for a lot of straight white cis men, <clears throat> especially those who are conservative. And, yeah, Mac confronts Elena. Very good scene. And, yeah, Mace goes on TV. And I will admit, there was, like, very briefly, I was thinking, please don't. Please don't rag in the AIDS crisis this. You know, please don't, you know, sit, say the thing and then say, I don't know, you know, maybe, maybe not. Some people, you know, just, yeah. Anyway, um, but, but no, he says, you know, he says the thing that you should in that situation and points out, you know, this was not in humans. These were human extremists with the EMPs. Right, also really love the detail that it's not a one-off EMP, it's a continuous pulse. So it's going to keep knocking out electronics. You know, that's why they brought electronics into this area. They thought, oh, it was a one-off thing for this area. We can bring electronics in, but because it's a continuous pulse, there's not. And I believe that is a thing. There, there are EMPs that emit a continuous... Yeah, and... And Mace brings up the, you know, he uses the, the teamwork motivational talk again. And <clears throat> I think this is the kind of place that it really works. You know, you need public figures like that to be positive, you know. And so, so I like that, you know, we were primed to find it kind of annoying because it's like, okay, we get it. You're, you're a cool boss. You're one of the bosses who, like... You know, no, we're, I'm just one of you guys. It's just, you know, it can get kind of annoying. Like, for some it is actually true, and that's great. And, yeah, we see at the end that the senator, Senator Ellen Nadir, is working with the watchdogs. And, you know, the, the post credits is her, you know, she, yeah, she, she... Yeah, talking with one of the watchdogs, and, you know, the, the yeah, and, and that's how, you know, she had access to these, to the registration details, that's how they got that information, and, you know, she's like, should I turn off the TV? No, I'll, I'll leave it on to keep you company, I'll check back in a couple of days, and then she leaves, and the camera pans over, and I'm guessing we're going to get a more clear explanation later in the show, but what it looks like <clears throat> is that someone close to her, you know, was going to turn, you know, was go or wait, I guess, hmm, I guess that is what happened to Trip also, wasn't it? He, like, so maybe this, yeah, either, either, you know, started to turn or was, like, taken out by it but didn't, like, crumble, the, the right, yeah, because because I think Trip, I think that was because of Daisy using accidentally using her quake powers. I think that was what caused that. So so yeah, you know, it's it's something like that, and that's what that's her motivation. And let's see, yeah. So some IMDb trivia. Right, right, yeah. The um, Simmons and Holden paraphrase Sherlock Holmes' famous quip, when you eliminate the impossible, whatever remains, however improbable, must be the truth. And, yeah, this takes place after Civil War. The new director mentions the Sokovia Accords, Steve Rogers being on the run. Was that this episode? Wasn't that the one before? Whatever. And, oh, pfft. So, the actress who plays Ellen Nadir, I'm going to try not to butcher it, Parminder Nagra, uh, you know, co-starred with Ming Na Wen on, you know, M Melinda May on ER. Very cool. And yeah, this episode debuted at Comic Con before airing on TV, which might help explain. You know, it's very yeah. This is the kind of episode if you're going to show just one episode to to of a crowd of of people who you know. Are especially primed for this sort of thing it's gonna be this one like I wouldn't really I don't think there's been a bad episode I I love every single episode so far of this show but this is especially one that is like okay that you know 
yeah, absolutely amazing. And <laughs> yeah, the opening title sequence. So yeah, this is a direct quote from Crazy Credits from IMDb. The opening title sequence features added electromagnetic interference as is fitting after the events in the opening scene. Yeah, very nicely done. And let's see. I th yeah, there's a uh, several really excellent quotes from the episode in the memorable quotes section and I quite appreciate that, you know, yeah, ultimately, you know, Mac Max theory the the you know this is a ghost you know he's he's very straightforward and sometimes that is what you need you know a lot of times it's really important to to be scientific about things but yeah you know sometimes science can't really explain the thing and it can sometimes it isn't absolutely but it can be you know the kind of thing okay you know yeah i mean Maybe it is a ghost. It was, you know, and, and Simmons concedes it was definitely something of an incorporeal nature. And let's see. Yeah. Um, I think that might be. Yeah, um, I quite like Daisy's always great with the little little remarks and and slang and such. She refers to Robbie becoming Ghost Rider as going all carrot top. <laughs> 